video, everybody. Thank you so much for your interest in the subject matter du jour and filling in the blanks between footage that I do have and footage that I don't have is this gorgeous spring summer-like color of my Volnara TLDC Fan Thursday. They could have named it Fantastic, but okay, Fan Thursday. <laughs> yellow leaves on our orchids. I mean, it's normal. We get yellow leaves, right? And in some cases, most cases, hopefully, yellow leaves are just a growth cycle, part of how the orchid is growing, progressing, and tissue and structures die back. But is it that clear cut? Is that always the case? And why is it happening if that isn't always the case? And that's what I wanna go through with you today, just to be on the safe side, as some of us are heading into spring and we expose our orchids to the beautiful, bright sunshine that spring and summer has in store for our orchids after being indoors and vice versa. Know that if you're moving your orchids inside and are supplementing with artificial light, some of these issues can still happen. Artificial light can also be quite aggressive and create some issues if we are not 100% vigilant and aware. And for those of you in those circumstances, you are bringing your orchids inside and you're going to be supplementing with artificial light throughout the winter. Let me just say one thing. If all went well during the summer months, during your grow season, be aware that your orchid has increased in size. The previous location may not be adequate anymore and the height of the light away from the leaves may actually be too close if the structures have grown bigger. If the orchid has grown wider and has expanded in its size, the radius of the artificial light that you had previously may not be enough. Take that into consideration because not only are some of the following the reasons for yellow leaves, but one of the points certainly is. So let's just get right into this list. And I know I am rushing a season here. We are by no means into spring summer yet and the Southern Hemisphere is still enjoying a beautiful summer and not even thinking about moving into fall and winter. But some of these points are important to note and it shouldn't be noted after the fact. In my opinion, a video like this could be very, very helpful to avoid it altogether. Now, let's get into the list. First of all, I'm gonna point out the obvious, the duh one. Like duh, sunburn. On some orchids, it can take a very long time to lose the leaf if it was exposed to too much sun and got burnt, as is in the case of my Stanhopia. Now, it is optional to cut the unsightly burn off for aesthetic purposes, but while there is still green, I just leave it and let the leaf do its own thing. So, it is obvious that in order to avoid this happening, we should not expose our orchids to the sun. Makes perfect sense. But this is where things have to be carefully monitored for those of us that do have the orchids outside throughout the warmer months of the year. And one of the ways we can monitor if the leaves are at risk of burning is just by touching them. You'd be surprised to feel a leaf feeling relatively cool to the touch despite full sun exposure and other leaves already feeling warmer. That is because the density of each leaf, and that can also apply to pseudobulbs, the structure of each leaf differs from orchid to orchid. Should the orchid feel a little bit warm, then take note of how much airflow is around, as that cools leaves down and can be a deciding factor if it's okay to leave the orchid where she's at, and then have a look around to see if shade is coming soon, because then you won't have to move your orchid. If none of these two relief influences, airflow and shade apply, then use a shade cloth or a curtain to protect the orchids in question. Know that artificial light can cause leaves to burn as well, and if orchids are grown under artificial lights throughout the winter months and then go outside for the warmer months, they need to be introduced to sunlight just as cautiously as any other orchid. The sun has a different intensity and having had them exposed to artificial lights for months and months and months does not prepare them for the sun. Another reason why our orchid leaves would go yellow are pollutants in the air. It will make an otherwise healthy leaf look as if it has started to rot. Some orchids are extremely sensitive when it comes to their respiratory system. In the case of my popcorn haruri, it did not appreciate the residual fumes of the gas heater I had on, on occasional nights only, during the really cold nights only. I then opted to work with cold hands on many other nights, but the damage was done. And it even went so far as to also take down the growths where the leaves were actually affected. Stem rot and pests. Seeing a leaf turn yellow starting from the stem outward to the end of the leaf where it is still green is a clear sign that there are issues at the stem. That could be rot 
or in many of my cases, scale. Stem rot is best treated immediately and if unpotting is not an option or cutting into any tissue to remove the rot is not an option, get in there with cinnamon or dragon's blood as fast as possible and there will still be no guarantees the orchid will survive. But doing nothing and there is a guarantee the orchid will move on, so to speak. We have another duh on our list. Old leaves on old structures will turn yellow and die off. That is normal and the orchid is just doing its thing. Absolutely hakuna matata here. But what if it's not just one leaf? In the case of old growths, they will show yellowing leaves as the orchid progresses in its growth cycle. As long as the leaves are yellow and firm, that is normal. And also a hakuna matata situation here. But watch out for any signs of softness in the tissue. That could be rot and needs to be dealt with by cutting the section away or dumping cinnamon or dragon's blood into that area. Or, if possible, cut it away and apply a desiccating or drying out agent of choice. Now, deciduous orchids will also show signs of yellowing leaves as part of their natural growth cycle. And that is also Hakuna Matata. If they occur on the structures expected to drop leaves, new growth should never show yellow leaves. That is a sign the orchid is in trouble and something is going wrong at the rhizome, in the pot, and the stem if it were to happen to a monopodial orchid. Bringing me to the point of, it is a possible sign of dehydration, a lack of water. Especially on new growths, they need a lot of water to get going. So if we don't water our orchid enough, could be the leaves will turn yellow. Light exposure will also turn leaves yellow, which is normal for many orchids as it is part of their culture. Now, unless you have a highlight orchid that has the protective blockers coating, as in the case of Rinculalia digbiana, those leaves will maintain their green color. Remove the glaucous coating by wiping the leaves and you will have removed its protection. After which more care has to be taken when it comes to light exposure on this orchid. But on the other side of the spectrum, Elalia purpurata needs to have a leaf color that leans towards a yellow green, like the yellow leaves of a summer blooming fowl, that kind of green. And this will indicate that it has enough light to bloom. And the older the structures are, on a purpurata, the yellower the leaves become. And once again, absolutely hakuna matata in this case on all the structures of Lelia purpuratas if the leaves are yellowing. Now let's take it to the opposite spectrum as well. Too low light levels will also impede photosynthesis, so the chlorophyll production is radically reduced, causing yellowing of leaves. That would otherwise be green, which moves straight into the point of a nutrient deficiency, mainly magnesium deficiency, which is paramount for the effective production of chlorophyll, giving our orchids leaves the green color they should have based on their characteristics. And I say it like that because you can be pumping in magnesium into a Lelia purpurata and your leaves will still stay more on the yellow side of green. It has nothing to do with a magnesium or a nutrient deficiency and everything to do with the characteristic of the orchid. Repeated magnesium soaks on a regular basis will correct that problem. But as with everything in our orchids, it will take time and it won't happen within a matter of weeks. And it can take up to a year to correct itself. But the spotting may never disappear entirely, all depending on how severe the deficiency was in the first place. So as we head into our various different seasons, I am excited that I'm heading into spring and everybody that's sweltering in a beautiful summer climate at this point in time is probably happy to be heading into fall for some relief. These are the points to look out for about your orchids doing things and leaves yellowing. And what is Hakuna Matata and what needs to be addressed or at least observed? I hope that this was helpful. If you have any observation that you would like to add to this list of what I've brought up with regards to yellowing leaves, the comments are there for a reason. Feel free to do so. In the meantime, let me wish you a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition. Yep, attach a condition to that, that you stay safe, because I really, really would like to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.